Do you like food? Do you like music? Who doesn't, right? Well, our guest today is a top Columbus real estate agent who is an expert at both. So make sure that you watch all the way through so you can figure out how to stuff your face and shake your money maker at the same time. What's up, everyone? It's Ryan Miracle, your favorite Columbus lender. And I want to introduce you guys to Jensen. Well, hello, everyone. Yeah. Hello, hello, Ryan. It's ironic that you say that you're Columbus's favorite lender. I'm actually Columbus's favorite realtor. High five. <laughs> Slap hands. <laughs> Yeah, so why don't you tell me a little bit about yourself and how you got into real estate? We'll start there. Okay, well, so I started in spring of 2008, which was a fantastic time to get into real estate. None better. Yeah, well, it's actually been, it's worked out pretty well. <laughs> so I was a professional musician living in Chicago and I felt like if this doesn't work out, I need to have something else to fall back onto. Fair. And uh, so I started, I got my real estate license and I started showing apartments in the city. Mm -hmm. And that was kind of, I never really thought that it would become a career. I thought it was just another job, but it sounded a little bit better than being a bartender, which I also was when I was in Chicago, you know, playing music and bartending kind of go hand in hand because you can switch out your shifts as you have gigs and you need to m maneuver your schedule around. And I felt like real estate would be the same. It's not. <laughs> so uh, your clients dictate your schedule, but uh, smash cut. My wife and I had a baby in Chicago. We decided to move back to Columbus, which is both our, both our hometown. Mm -hmm. And here, here I am here 50, 15 years later. It, it's funny how we can all just tie our, our real estate careers into just backing into it. I've met very few people who actually say they wanted to go into real estate as a profession. We all just kind of, well, we'll just give it a try yeah. and see how it goes. Yeah, those, those people probably failed. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, it's not, it's not easy as easy as what they make it sound like on mm. the brochure, right? hundred percent. Okay. So question for you to kind of get, stay on topic today. So how has the food scene in Columbus, Ohio influenced the real estate market or is there a tie to it? So I think you gotta have food to live there, right? Yeah. So like having good food definitely enhances anywhere you live. Mm -hmm. You know, how many clients do I interact with that say, I wanna be walkable to restaurants. I wanna be walkable to, you know, grocery stores. So food is, you know, a very, very big part of where people choose to live. You know, you coming from, you know, being in Chicago for 10 years, I mean, Chicago just has amazing food and it's localized to the neighborhoods, you know, okay. where, you know, like, you know, they, there's Asian food and, you know, farther north that you go and, and, you know, they just have different pockets it's ghetto and i don't mean that in a derogatory sometimes that's the best food 100 percent, that's the best food right so you know there's you know polish neighborhoods and asian neighborhoods and all of the and then the food in those neighborhoods is just amazing we're a lot more diverse in columbus okay i i, I feel that you know there is no little vietnam in columbus i think that most of the areas pretty balanced. I mean, obviously all of the suburbs have, have, you know, the, you know, your favorite hits, your Olive Garden, your Applebee's, your crap chain food. Right. <laughs> so, you know, I think we're getting better though. I, I, I honestly do. And I, and I would attribute a lot of the growth of the Columbus food scene to none other than Cameron Mitchell. So he's, he's been at it for, I mean, probably since the early nineties, you know, he started with Cameron's and Linworth. I think that was the, the OG, the American Bistro. And then he, he just, he had some, some really great ideas. I know that he cherry, he would go around the country and cherry pick ideas from other markets and bring them here and try them out. And man, has he not tried out a lot. You know, I think that the, the Cap City concept, you know, a fine diner mm -hmm. was super cool. You know, he's done steakhouses, Italian restaurants. The only restaurant that I know of that he hasn't uh, mass produced 
at scale and is still one of the OG restaurants is Molly Wu's. And that's his only Asian concept. Okay. Molly's his wife's name. And that is in the Polaris mall. I actually worked there You did when I was 22, maybe. Was it the uh, firecracker chicken? I loved it. Oh, oh, so, so it is so good. So, but yeah, Cameron has just continued to reinvent himself and his his chain of restaurants. And I think Columbus owes him a, a great great debt of gratitude for what he's done to our food scene here. You know, I also I also think we're we're a great pizza city. Dave Portnoy, if you guys know the president of. Barstool Sports was here for the Big Ten tournament, and he made his rounds to several Columbus pizza places, and he had he had good things to say, which he's a Michigan grad, so he doesn't usually have a whole lot <laughs> of good things to say about Columbus. But I think their recent wins has helped skew his opinion of Columbus. But yeah, it was kind of fun to watch him. Uh, my family became a big fan over COVID. Mm -hmm. because he was held up in his New York apartment and he tried all the frozen pizzas and he would review all the frozen uh, pizzas. And that was, that was really fun. My, my kids actually started, we, we would start to buy some of the pizzas that he would review. And then my, my kids would also review the pizza. <laughs> we did little videos and it was fun, but uh, yeah, no, I think, you know, you know. So what's your favorite pizza place? Wow. Right now. My favorite is, so we just moved to Jefferson Meadows in Blacklick, mm -hmm. and there is a, a mom and pop shop on Taylor Road called Stads. Stads. And uh, that's, that's, that's my, my winner right now. They also have live music. So oh. it's, it's a lot of fun. It's definitely your jam. It, it, intended. You got it. But we, we've got, we went in there a couple of weeks ago. I called ahead because it gets, it gets packed. Okay. Or jam. <laughs> And uh, they said, they said, come on down. We got a couple tables open and we, we went in and there was, there was a guy playing the guitar and singing and my kids were up dancing. And, uh, there was a couple tables that were over serving themselves and getting <laughs> rowdy. And it was, it was a ton of fun, you know? And so that's, that's, that's my jam right now. I, I, I don't know that I have a, a standout like number one, but. But that's, that's the one that's got your attention at that's, least for the moment. That's the one that's got my attention for the moment. Sexton's Pizza also is a, is another one that I really like, and that's close by. Um, they, they are, the owners are, I think they're brothers. Don't quote me on that, but they are ex-military. They had, uh, the location that I tried was in Reynoldsburg mm -hmm. and uh, my wife was getting her nails done and I just decided to go in and it did not look like a place that would be very good. The ambiance was like from the outside looking in, I was like, eh. but she was getting her nails done next door. They served pizza by the slice. I got a pint and a slice and I'm telling you it is absolutely great pizza. And Portnoy gave it a 8.1 on his pizza reviews when he was in town. So that's pretty high for a Portnoy review that's saying, anywhere, that's saying something. but especially in Columbus. So. And it looks like they're their fire it looks like it but i i, I think it's just their it's their crust and one of the owners yeah. did did tell me they use a special flower that allows their crust to, to come out like that so yeah, it looks really good yeah. i mean i i you know i'm a realtor i'm a musician <laughs> but i'm a fat guy so i that's <laughs> i know i know about food yeah so, so what are some of the best, and I know you touched on it a little bit, but is there specific neighborhoods like Italian village or Marion village or Hilliard that are known for like really good food, like a type of food in that area? You know, that's, that, that's a good question. I, I, I honestly, I, I go back to the diversity mm -hmm. uh, thing. You know, if you go to, let's just, you know, let's look at bridge park. Is, is, is bridge, it's a great hotbed for food, but is there a certain type of food? No, I would say not. Probably. Right. And so, and then even you go to German village, well, you got Schmitz, mm -hmm. but there's not other German restaurants to, Oddly. to note, right? Oddly. But there is a lot of great food in and around German village. Mm -hmm. So, which Cameron is putting a new 
one at the corner of Third and Sycamore ish. Okay. And I I can't wait for that to open. I I can't for the life of me remember what they they called it. What's um, the concept? I think it's Italian. Okay. So high end Italian. So I'm sure it's gonna go well. Yeah. Yeah. So, but yeah, no. As far as like one neighborhood, I can't think of a neighborhood that has a specific style of food or type of food. So well, good. Well, you mentioned a little bit earlier, but how is there a in an area or other like specific locations that tie in food and music really, really well. I think if you want to talk about music, food, bars, nightlife, mm -hmm. you gotta you gotta look at the short north. Short north. Short that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. I mean you've got you've got pubs, you've got bars, short north tavern always has bands mm -hmm. on the weekends. Every once in a while, you'll find a street musician out there. Then you've got Lincoln Social. So you've got rooftop bars, Seesaw, you know, a lot of the hip, you know, places that I'm too old and not, not good looking enough to get into. <laughs> but yeah, but I mean, then you've got gay bars and like all, you know, just party central down there and, and, and a lot of good food as well. Yeah. You know. So, well, good. Yeah. Good, good, good. So are there any upcoming events, music-wise, that you're excited about? You know, the Sonic Temple, which I think, what did you say it was, it used to be called? Used, I think. Rock on the Range. Used to be Rock on the Range. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's one that, that I would love, love, love to go to if I was 20 years younger. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, going to rock on the range <laughs> when I was younger, I'd be exhausted. Yeah. I'd be exhausted just getting into it, let alone, <laughs> let alone paying $18 for a Miller Lite and then having somebody knock it out of my hand because they're slam dancing or whatever. But and funny thing about rock on the range is when it was still around, when my youngest daughter was getting christened, that was the weekend of rock on the range. And as soon as it was, we were done at the church, we, I split out of there and was that rock on the ranger yesterday so I, I still haven't lived that down at home but i'm glad to see that they still are continuing yeah. this kind of thing and it looks like the lineup is really big yeah it does I, I mean i just i would love to see foo fighters they're one of the i would say that they are my favorite rock band really yeah so were yeah. you a nirvana fan beforehand no i was not i am not a dave grohl fan or a taylor hawkins fan and taylor hawkins is one of my favorite drummers that doesn't make any sense what i just said We'll roll with it. But when Dave Grohl was in Nirvana, I felt like he was just a basher. And Nirvana... Like style of drummer? Yeah, just, just big stick. Like, you know, when he got interviewed by Modern Drummer Magazine, it was, what kind of sticks do you use? And he said, whatever the biggest stick I can get a hold of. And at the time, you know, I'm studying music, I'm studying drums, and I'm studying, you know... Dennis Chambers, Steve Gadd, some of the, you know, the guys that are technicians mm -hmm. and, and are, have chops and, and, and dynamics. And to me, I just saw him with long hair just back there, just, <laughs> you know. And consequently, Taylor also kind of fit that. Now it's a Foo Fighter drummer. That's correct. Well, he, he's since passed. Former, yeah. Yeah. But I saw the... Foo Fighters at the Newport Music Hall in, I want to say, 96 or 97. Mm -hmm. They had just kind of started. And I, I mean, every stroke was just, and just, but for two hours straight. And I said, there's no way that guy is not just done a mountain of cocaine. <laughs> and... Uh, unfortunately i think i was right yeah. but he once you heard him in interviews and you saw what a lovable dude he seemed to be i never had the chance to meet him but uh, you know he's 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 gonna be missed by a lot of people I, yeah. that was one that really kind of hit when when i woke up that morning and found out that he, he had left us so Sad. I don't want to bring this down, no, so let's, no, let's, let's bring it back on, up. Moving on. So you also mentioned another festival that was coming to town here soon. It's not coming to town. It's always in town. It is yes. our town. It is our, our festival. It is ComFest. ComFest. Tell me about it. So, I, you know, it's weird. I, I don't think I've ever played at ComFest. I've been to a lot of ComFests, and all my friends have played at ComFest, but 
I don't think that I've actually ever played it, but it is at the end of June. What is my, my, I just, I'm having a brain fart. The, what's the, the park that it's at? Couldn't tell you. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I guess you can. But the same location yeah. every single year. Yeah. It is at the same location every yeah. year, right off the Neal Avenue exit. Good Ale Park. Yeah. Good Ale Park. Okay. All right. There we go. We'll cut that one out. Yeah. All right. <laughs> So yeah, it's at Good Ale Park every year. It should be the end of June. Check it out. L lack of deodorant, definitely. I've heard. Yeah, yeah. So shower ahead of time. Well, I mean, you can shower, but you're still gonna smell other people that didn't. Your counterparts. Yeah. Fair. So, but you said that you've played Compass before. No, I haven't. It's the it's the one thing that I like. I don't think I've I've done I, unless I did, and I just don't remember, which is possible. Played a lot of shows. Well. <laughs> I mean, not to toot your own horn, but yeah. toot. So that being said, it seems like you have a good understanding of the, the the food culture, which I've heard a lot of good things. Like we have more restaurants per capita than really any other city, even close to our size. We probably have more pounds per capita because of it. <laughs> probably. I just got back from Houston and they said that that Houston was ranked as the heaviest city, if you really? will. Mm. So we're not there yet. Got it. Moving okay. in that direction. All right. Well, keep it, keep it up. Keep eating. Uh, yeah. We have big, <laughs> big shoes, big pants to fill. Yeah. yeah something like that. But so that being said, what, what is one thing? So like attracts like, so with you having this knowledge and this experience with mm -hmm. food and music around town, how, how do you leverage that to try to help your clients find something that would be the right situation for them? As far as real estate. Well, I mean, I, I obviously in real estate, you're ask. it's all, it's a game of questions. Okay. So you're, you know, you're where, you're why, and you're when. Okay. And so one of the questions that I start to ask people is, well, what kind of food do you like to eat? Where, you know, what do you like to do? And it, by knowing the places in town, that's kind of where I can steer them in that direction. That's good. So, so is there one side of town that you see more clients trending to because of the questions that you ask and your experience? I mean, I think, you know, Easton was the big draw. Now I think Bridge Park is, yeah. is, is definitely getting a lot of pull and they're, and they're do, they've done a great job mm -hmm. uh, at, cool at de developing that area and making it walkable. You know, they're, are a lot of cool things on the horizon for Columbus. You know, I don't know how many people know about Gravity downtown. Are you familiar with it? I have. I actually went and did, I shot a video there two weeks ago. Mm -hmm. The place is awesome. So if you haven't driven in it, you've seen the building. I know you've seen the building, but you have to go in and look on the inside. It is awesome. But then, but then, from that, I I was lucky enough to be in some of the develop meetings, development meetings with Kaufman. So you've got Gravity, and then you've got Franklinton over here. Right next door. This is all going to be filled in with shops, restaurants, open green space that you can drink and walk around in. It just hasn't, you know, developed yet but it's coming. Yeah. Speaking from someone who lives hard in the burbs, I don't live anywhere near a city. I do feel like my family's missing out on the walkability stuff. Yeah. And I, I think a lot of upcoming metros have either gotten there or are trending that direction. So with, with those kind of developments like Bridge Park, Gravity, e Easton was kind of our first run with that. Mm -hmm. Do you have kind of your finger on the pulse of any new places like that? So we had part of the leadership team with the Gehanna Association of Realtors okay. and we had the mayor in on Friday and she kind of filled us into some some more walkability and some extra development that's going to be coming in Gehanna which I think is really necessary because Gehanna and New Albany you know obviously Johnstown are all going to be super affected by the intel effect yeah. if you're Gehanna you really don't have a lot of room to grow because you're sort of landlocked and you're you're That's done. Yeah. So seeing the reuse of buildings and structures and and figuring out a way to carve in trails and paths was really interesting. You know, obviously I'm not the mayor, so I I can't just off the top of my head <laughs> like speak speak to detail, but all I can tell you is cool things are coming. 
No, I would I would say like okay, so you mentioned Ento, so mm -hmm. that's coming in on the east side of town, and then the Honda battery plant's kind of southwest. Mm -hmm. Amazon, Facebook, all these places are continuing to be uh, attracted here. Are, are we expecting a population boom here from people who aren't here yet? Mm -hmm. Is that what we can expect for Columbus and Central Ohio in general? From what I've heard, we can expect upwards of a another million people in the next seven to ten years. A million people. Mm -hmm. if, pardon my language, but where the hell are these people coming from? Everywhere. I mean, and and people have realized they can live anywhere, especially COVID's let uh, us let us work remotely. Mm -hmm. I mean, in our industry, we're seeing prices just go, we think, crazy, mm -hmm. but we're still a very affordable city in comparison to... New York, New Jersey, you know, all the, the East Coast, California, you know, if, if I if I have a higher priced listing mm -hmm. um, and I know that the people that are coming are New Yorkers or Californians, I'm like, yes, because like You're not gonna bat an eye. a million dollars is like a shack to them. <laughs> so, the closet. yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's funny that you mentioned that because when I first started in lending about 18 years ago, my average sale ticket was about 189. Mm -hmm. uh, just in like the last three years, I've seen that accelerate past 200,000, and now we're at like 275 on the regular. And that was just since COVID. Right. So with with property values continuing to climb, and not enough real estate happening right now as far as the existing market. Are you seeing that the people, the people in charge, developers, city councils, those kind of things, are they working on projects to bring in more housing expeditiously? I don't, I don't know what they can do. Yeah. Like there's not, they don't, they don't have the power to build their, True. their government. Right. So it's only, you know, people with deep pockets that have the money to build. And I'm actually seeing the 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 small guy the custom home builder builder not be able to i mean if they can find the land then great they can build and their client better have deep pockets because land has gotten uh, unaffordable to most yeah. but you know the the big guys the production houses the mi the the pulte the, those are the the only ones that are that are developing right now because they're going up and buying up farms and then w w they're doing what what i call it looks like they shoot houses out of a t-shirt cannon <laughs> <laughs> you know they're all right next to each other but like they're hey they're, they're giving us houses yeah and you know they're they're expensive yeah. i mean i i have yet to really see any of those production built homes going much under 500 and that's and that's and that's not for a very large home either so yeah. um it's getting expensive and and we have a we have an affordability issue okay and i don't i mean i don't have the means to to fix it i'm just out there trying to take care of my clients so <laughs> so that being said so since there is this huge string of competition in our marketplace what are you doing to leverage your expertise and your negotiation skills to get your clients to say there's 10 offers on one, two, three main street. Mm -hmm. What are, don't give away the farm, but what are you doing that you could share that helps your clients get into contract? I mean, I will, I will give away the farm. It's relationships. Okay. My relationships with other agents and my hands on with the deal you know, I see agents go out and show 10 homes and then their clients pick the be the house that they like and they go, okay, what do you want to offer on it? They write it up and then they, they just send it over. And I know this because I do primarily listings. Mm -hmm. I would say 70% of agents don't call me. So they just shoot off. They either will send me a text or, or they will sh you shoot me an offer and then they pray. I, I guess, I don't know, but, but it's the agents that call me and say, Hey, you know, we were, we met at this event and, you know, my clients really love the house. Mm -hmm. And do you have any offers? What are, you know, what, and what works best for your clients? Um, that's, that's who 
you know, that's who wins when I'm listing and, and consequently it works the other way too. Right. You know, I just, I'm closing on a house tomorrow where the buyers are relocating from out of state and there were multiple offers, mm -hmm. but because I picked up the phone, I called the other agent and had that personal interaction. Um, there was an offer that was 10,000 higher than ours, but we got into contract because through that conversation, I found out the seller was a teacher and they had kids that needed to finish the school year in the school that they were in. Mm -hmm. My clients were coming from out of state, had two little girls that would like to finish. And so if we go ahead and close and we let you stay and we stay here, mm -hmm. We got the deal. And now, so you're telling me the secret sauce is not being a killer negotiator. It's actually being a human being and giving well, no. a crap about the person across the table. But right? that's, that is the, the killer negotiation. Right. Right. And I, I'm so glad that you said that because so what is there 30,000 agents in Ohio and like 5,200 just in Columbus alone. Oh, it's higher than that. Is it really? Oh yeah. Uh, it was 10,000. It was 10,000. Like last year or the year before, wow. they're starting to drop off because it's getting hard. It is. It is. But to that point, having <laughs> an agent who, one, has the staying power to make it in a, t in a down market like this, and two, has the interpersonal communication skills and the relationships with the individual agents. That's one of the things that I really enjoy about you know, on social and in person with, and with other people is you are so warm. I wouldn't call you a teddy bear, but you're not far <laughs> off, buddy. Oh, thanks. So if you're looking for an agent who can just wrap their arms around you and make the other party that you're hoping that they take your offer, make them feel good too, I don't think you can really do much better than this guy right Bring now. it in. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> so, so that being said, I want to thank you for coming on today. Thanks for having me. It, it, my pleasure. So is there anything or is there any specific channel? And I know you're everywhere and mm -hmm. you're considering only fans as well that's true yeah so is there any way if someone liked your vibe or wanted to reach out to you and have you be their their foodie music realtor how can they get a hold of you What's i am the primary i am at jensen spike g-i-n-s-o-n-s-p-e-i-c-h at jensen spike on nearly every platform every platform so he got in early mm, well and i have a weird name <laughs> well that's true there's not much competition you know surprisingly i ran into another ryan miracle on facebook and he lives like 30 minutes you're kidding me and he's a car salesman so ryan if you're watching buddy I, i'm giving you a shout out <laughs> nice guy super young but thank you guys so much hopefully you got something out of today if you are looking to buy or sell if you're a home buyer homeowner we would love to be your real estate resource of choice so if that's the case make sure to watch this video right here and if nothing else we'll see you guys on the next one